Yeah, so I, I feel like that that goes well, like going with like really his roots, what he's probably most comfortable with, uh, to take on like one of the beasts of Dawn of War Two. Well, Holy, ho hopefully Holy is a little more on top of things this match. Uh, I do feel like he was dropping a couple plays there uh, yeah, on that last match. he seemed to drop match, quite a few so. things there. It was, it was uncharacteristic. Uh, I have heard that Holy Hammer is supposed to have, like, really good micro. I'm not really sure. It's, it's hard to tell sometimes just from watching. Maybe if he did a, a first-person stream at one point, which I don't think he ever will. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much keeps to himself. Yeah, I mean, he he pretty much doesn't even play Dawn of War 2 until we say, like, hey, there's a tournament out, uh, who wants to win it? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm up for that. He's, uh, a, he's otherwise, a lone like, wolf. There have been some times when he's played some Company of Heroes. He's done pretty well in Company of Heroes. Uh, Company of Heroes 2, that is. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw him in, in, a, in some matches. I don't think he's like, necessarily taken the gold. But there was even one point when I saw a match on YouTube. Company of Heroes 2... Holy Hammer versus Vindicare X. Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of the guys. Uh, yeah. Vindicare. Uh... I think I think Holy Hammer actually won it quite handily. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, Vindicare's Vindicare's not been around in ages. Oh yeah, he was he was a beast too. Which is a shame because now the Vindicare is actually in the game. I mean, I I think there was a point back in retail when Vindicare might have either been like the best player or like the second best player behind Holy Hammer. Oh yeah, he was he was super. Like solid. he was he was doing that well. But anyway, about this game, we've got the Burna Sluggas again. You know, I'd say the Burna Sluggas like right now, like actually a no-brainer, considering he's already been doing it, and now we've got Garrison. So he's like just immediately actually denying the Garrisons as an option. Even actually threatened to take out that Warp Spider XR. He's I don't think it's gonna happen, but it was close. Yeah, I mean you could see Hammer was kinda looking for an escape so he could keep capping with the Warp Spider, but uh didn't quite manage to pull it off. Yeah, I think any other hero would have been down in that situation. Yeah, most Man, definitely. That, yeah, he 11 HP. Down anyway, even with a teleport. This would also be a good match for the Commando Knob to get the stunt, the, the, the stick bombs, I think. Yeah, definitely. Especially if he throws it out at the door, throws like four stick bombs right at the doorway, a squad walking. Look at how slowly they get out of the building with a stun bomb. Yeah, wow, that was... That was amazing. That was rough. Oh my god. So again, we're seeing double slugger, double shooter. More of that aggressive play. Same build. Same same strategies at the moment. Well, I mean, up, he very clearly the knows the timing of the of that shuriken coming out, and he just knows that if he just pushes right in and gets there, he can take yeah. out that gen farm before the shuriken can answer and stop the push. And, I mean, players have all different styles of learning and different approaches to the game, and Tex is the kind of player where he will know things like that, know the timings, know, like, again, what I said before, well, he'll say something like, I see my opponent has this, this, and this. Uh, he, I should be this far ahead in tech of him, uh, ahead of him. Like, he is that kind of player. Right. Banshees did manage to kill the, uh, kill the node back here and force off a squad of sluggers, but uh, wasn't a quite enough. Two. Two, two overall, possibly another one. Yeah, they are taking some yep, fire. A lot of range fire on retreat, but I think they'll get out of there with the three, which is, this. that's actually very, very nice to not lose that third model. Uh, save 40 requisition and not have to reinforce it. So Holy Hammer with the VP lead, but Tex being aggressive, took out some generators. Yeah, I mean, the the map is actually slightly in favor of Hammer right now. He does have uh, one of Tex's requisition points and the other decapped. I mean, I think I actually remember one of the, again, one of the old videos I watched on, like, on Harlequin's channel way back when, watching a Warp Spider Exarc match, and him just saying something about the viability of the Warp Spider Exarc as a tournament hero. And I think a lot of that has to do with the teleport and what that means for map control, as well as even other things like being an early counter to certain kinds of units, uh, whether it's snipers, uh, setup teams, etc. Yeah, I mean, he can he can negate so many of those unit types, and his starting melee is, is you know, he's not going to contend with any sort of melee squad, melee committed squad, but uh, he has a special attack. It goes off fairly quick, fairly commonly. He's got, you know, decent melee skill. 
So yeah, I think there's just something inherently strong about the Warp Spider Exarch as long as he has that teleportability, which is, I mean, it's pretty much core to what he is. Oh yeah, I mean, well, having having a teleporter out of the gate that you don't have to upgrade, and just the way Eldar works, like because obviously Mechboy has teleport as well, but uh, just the way just the way Eldar moves around the map and keeps that constant pressure on, and the Warp Spider again having that reasonable melee uh, makes him more of a threat than the Mechboy when he's interrupting other squads. Now, it looks like Holy Hammer actually is managing to weather the early storm of Orc gunfire. He's now got two of the support weapon units out on the field. He's got the Rangers as the sniper rifle and uh, the, the shuriken cannon. And he seems to be doing okay now. Although Tex, still with a bit of a lead in map control, he's got two of the BPs. Good job covering those sluggers. I was about to say that was a questionable engagement to try to try to commit to right there, but he had this. Yeah. Oh, oh he no! Should wait, know. He's going, it's a building. No, that's a bad oh, no. idea. Yeah, that's he recognizes that. I mean, that's, see. I mean, that's gotta oh. be an accident, maybe. Like, I can't imagine him doing yeah. that intentionally, and there was just no way he was gonna get the commando knob out there. I mean, he po it's possible he clicked it before he realized he was taking fire from the rangers. Yeah, or or even just like a misclick, like just trying to move it like near there and accidentally clicked on the garrison. And I've actually had times in the past where I've accidentally clicked on garrisons and then couldn't stop them, the unit from going into the garrison. Uh, basically just couldn't stop them from going into the garrison even yeah, though I tried to like, fix starts, it. Yeah, once the animation starts, they can't, uh, they can't yeah. bail out. And I mean, the garrisons have like that interesting duality where they can both be like incredibly powerful and a death trap. Yeah, I think, it, and that's 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 another cool thing that I feel like is is accurate. I don't know. That's that's what I like so much about these relic style RTS games is that they do feel so visceral like that. Like, yeah, bunkers are amazing and they'll keep you under under great cover most of the time. But if someone has a weapon for your bunker. Then you're, I mean, you're done. I think in uh, in Company of Heroes, the bunkers aren't quite as extreme. They actually play more of a role in Company of Heroes, but they're not quite as extreme. Where you can do more damage to a unit that's in a garrison in Company of Heroes, um, even if you don't have like the dedicated anti-garrison weapons. Right. But um, it's also not as much of a death trap as it is in uh, in Dawn of War Two. Yeah. Well, normally the the the. Uh houses and such in Company of Heroes are a bit more spread out, so, like, grenades don't have as much of an impact since they only hit a couple of the units. And, of course, in, in Dawn game, of War Yeah, it's a lot of towers. Have trick of throwing, throwing the grenade at the door. That also is... works in Company of Heroes as well. It's just, you're not yeah. always sure which door they're going to come out of, because... Oh, whereas pretty much there's usually just one door to these, these Dawn of War 2 buildings. Right. And it's... I mean, there's actually, like, really no reason not to throw it at the door. Yeah, more often than not, you just want to throw it at the door instead of in the actual building. Meanwhile, on the right, we've got infiltrated sluggas ambushing some Dire Avengers. The Dire Avengers might get wiped. It's a close call. No, but one model got models. way yeah. ahead, yeah. Yeah, there was just a lead model that was just way far ahead. But yeah, there was a, that was a critical knockdown a really they got right there. Call, so some nice use of that global. Banshee's looking for trouble. And uh, Death Dread coming out here in just a Death moment. Dread. And right under the Death Dread, it has its own subtitle, the Stompy Tin Can, which I, I love that. I love <laughs> that, that subtitle there for me to read it and, and chuckle a bit to myself. Oh, man, I didn't think the Banshees were going to go with that direction, but saves them a couple models most definitely. Still Ooh. retreating through another squad of Slugs. I think that was the Exarch that went down, Oh, too. yeah, they only lost the Exarch. No it's, model, no other model. That always happens. Exarch. And... <laughs> That's the kind of thing where I could expect a, whole, a comment from Holy Hammer. <laughs> like something very funny. I mean, Holy Hammer rages, and when he does rage, sometimes it's actually very funny. <laughs> With the way he says things and his particular way of speaking. Yeah, he's, ju he's just normally very brunt. Yes. Like he'll say, get wrecked, or he'll complain about something in the game and say, noob relic. <laughs> But stomping stomp, on in. Game, stomping all over. Doesn't have much time to like really make this critical play, but I think just has just enough time that he can burn down a few generators. But he's not going for the generators yet. Oh, there he goes. It all just, right. it just took a quick second. 
Yeah, he Wraith Lord's coming in. One down, possibly two, before the Wraith Lord, Wraith Lord is in range. Yeah, the Banshees are going to move into at least... Are, can also tie it up. Yeah. And that's not a winning fight for the Banshees, but they can tie it up and delay the Generator Bash and also give enough time for the Wraith Lord to get in here. Yeah, like with how fast those burners burn down gens, those Banshees actually probably save the Generator. Still going to get two. Actually walks forward and finishes off with melee because otherwise he would get tied up by the Wraith Lord. You can actually tie up melee, uh, you can actually tie up Dreadnoughts or Walkers to prevent them from shooting their ranged weapons. Tex looks like he's not paying attention to his shooter boys. He might lose the squad. Are the shooter boys? Oh no, he's not. He's yeah. definitely not. And he loses one squad of shooter boys. So this time it's been Tex dropping a few things. He lost a commander knob, lost a squad of shooter boys. That said, it's still pretty even. He's not happy, but yeah, I feel like he's not out of this game yet. The resources, the, they're both in tier 2. Map control is slightly in Tex's favor. Tex actually has more resources in the bank, but he just lost the unit. Getting another Death Dread, interesting. Oh man, I, I do love some Death Dread spam when you can pull that off. I Having mean, a I think... booby trap on this on this uh, victory point as well, you don't often see the Commando not booby trap war gear. Two Death Dreads actually should be able to take on a Wraith Lord. Yeah, not to mention just put some serious pressure on the rest of the Eldar army. We do have Warp Spiders on the field, which will be able to stun one of them and kind of even the odds here. But uh, that being said, there's just not a lot of potential anti-vehicle weaponry on the field as it stands. Now, we do have the Oh Warp... man, the booby trap goes uh, off and gets a squad. Oh, I missed I missed it. Oh, and it must have been the, it was the Dire Avengers, but I missed it. That's Ashamed. exactly what he needed to While I was checking some stats. Squad. I was checking some stats to see uh, how powerful the Death Dreads are in melee. Only 70 DPS per second now. I feel like there was a time when it was more. Oh man, and here come these twin ro robots stomping on out, man. <laughs> I love how awkward these guys are. They're the best. <laughs> So much is so, great about the work design. I don't know about these Slugger Boys going in. Yeah, so they got to get out of there. They'd be so, fortunate to get out of there, I think. Count. That could be the end of one of the Death Dreads, and if it's going to get out of there, it's going to need to really, like... Um, like if it has its charge, charge it might be okay. Oh my gosh, oh, those oh. big, big heavy attack on those Warp Spiders. Right now, and even then, I'm not totally sure it can outrun the Banshees. Might be I able think to it will be able to because yeah, it does have aiming. Space. What's that? And aiming what's that. So very, very nice. Manages to keep both of the Death Dreads alive. And since he no longer has both of the Death Dreads out on the field, he actually took the other one and took it away from the Wraith Lord because one Death Dread by itself definitely is going to lose to the Wraith Lord. Does less damage, has less health, just pretty much straight up going to lose. Another booby trap goes down, but I think the Wraith Lords, or sorry, the, the Rangers spotted him using that, so they're going to be able to go in there and eliminate that booby trap. Uh-oh. But now we see... The uh, Bright Lance, the shoulder mounted Bright Lance on the Wraith Lord, that's going to make it quite a bit tougher uh, for the Death Dread. So he's trying to use the charge, block line of sight. I think he needs to like pull this second Death Dread back as well. Yeah, he's shortly going to be headed, be able to head into tier 3, so I think he really wants to hold on to these Death Dreads. Like, a lot of times you'll see the Orcs be uh, overly aggressive and just go ahead and push it in for a kamikaze push, but uh, wow, even so, that. Wraith Lord's just being able to keep up with it. He already yep. used the uh, the charge, so I don't know yeah. how long yeah. he, what the cooldown what's, what's is. What's tough for Tex right now is his only anti-vehicle are the Death Dreads themselves. And individually, they lose to the Wraith Lord. I don't know if this one's going to make it out of there alive. Two more shots should take it out. Yeah, so he's definitely oh, going to lose this. Wow, no, he's he... going to stop it out of there. Oh, the... no! Oh, man. That is, I mean, the Bright Lance Wraith Lord is pretty powerful like that. No, I mean, the Bright Lance is expensive, and rightfully so, because we not, saw not right there. Not hugely full in terms of DPS, but just to have that ranged weapon on on a vehicle itself and a mobile platform that doesn't need to set up is just a very strong combination of, of attributes. Well, suddenly this, this Wraith Lord is going to be a huge problem. Or is it? <laughs> We are going into, Tex is going into tier 3. I don't know if he can get knobs out or loot a tank. Both of those could potentially be an answer to a Wraith Lord. Yeah, by the time he hits tier 3 uh, with the upgrade finishing, he should have enough resources for one or the other of those options. I think he said recently, his, his opinion is that right now knobs aren't really great in the current state of Elite Mod, so we'll see. 
Um, but at least right now, when I look at the compositions, it looks like the only thing that could really potentially slow down the knobs are the Guardian Weapon Team. Uh-oh. Are the Slugger Boys? Slugger Boys are going to get out of there just fine. Or not just fine. They are going to lose a lot of health. Yeah, and wow, that was actually a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Off. Yeah, I mean, Eldar, they do have a lot of those, like, extra just options to take out squads. But <laughs> holy losing models and an Exarch on his Warp Spider for the, going those, for that. Those burners do some serious damage on range against those light oh, infantry so squads. And it looks like, yeah, it's, it is going to be knobs. And I just realized it's the, the Warp Spider Exarch is actually down now. I missed that whenever it happened. The Warp Spider Exarch is down. Oh, yeah, I missed that as well. He's sitting right next to that power farm. He must have just gotten taken up by some range fire while like, the rest of the shenanigans were happening. Back and forth, pretty even. There were times when I thought, like, oh, now it's look like it's going in favor of Tex. Oh, now no. Oh, the orcs get that Banshee Exarch. That might be able to secure them to win. I don't know if they should be sticking around There's, in this, though. Here, here's the commando call-in. Of all things, that was a call in, a commando call in. <gasps> Ooh, the Wraith so Lord! Let's go down to finish off that slugger. Our commandos, we actually see commandos. Commandos, an often neglected unit because I think these days uh, flash kits are often favored over them. But commandos still a pretty solid unit. They actually do pretty high DPS. Well, yeah, they they no longer have the reduced range that they used right, to have. Right. They reduced range in in retail, so they don't have that anymore. And their DPS is good. It's lower than flash kits, but higher than fully upgraded shooter boys. Tex so, really mining up this map. Yeah. Has a booby trap by his point. Has the far wreck point on his side also booby trapped. I think that's why Holy Hammer is using his rangers to cap now instead of his other squads is because he's not sure yeah. where the traps and are. So he can actually detect with, uh, with his main capping unit. So the commando knobs are going to be really handy. Uh, one, because of they, they do have that awesome burn -a bomb ability. And two, it just kind of secures the double, the double shoot a pile that provides that range DPS that'll beat just about any other one or two range squads. So the commandos actually do 17.5 DPS piercing per model multiplied by five. Uh, let's see, what's that? That's like 100 minus something. Yeah, it's just short of probably about, about 88. 85, I think. 85, 80, 88. Yeah, you're right, because I forgot. I wasn't adding the decimals. So around that range. very. It's actually pretty high. So knobs are moving in onto the field now. They're in the game. Doesn't even use... You, you see, uh, he's really trying to make sure he doesn't pop that meaner and greener ability right away. He actually tried to use the commandos to reduce the effectiveness of that, and now that the warp spiders are off, you see, he's playing this very intelligently. He's made sure he forced off those warp spiders before he charged in with the Death Dread, didn't pop his knob special yet, so, like, he now has all of these tools available to, if he so chooses, to force off the Wraith Lord, which he does so easily. Alright, so now... Yeah, that Wraith Lord is now definitely compositionally at a disadvantage against the knobs. That said, I mean, the Shuriken Cannon's still out there, so whenever he chooses to pop his ability... Oh no, this this thing might be a bit overextended. All right. Yeah, now it might be Tex overcommitting. I actually don't see the, the uh, Warp Spider X... Not the... The Death Dread make it out <laughs> alive in this engagement. Yeah, he got I'm a little too I'm getting some weird sound effect there. stuff. I think it's because the, the Shuriken Cannon is shooting point-blank at the Death Dread. Yeah, that was that was pretty weird. I was hearing that. <gasps> and well. a sink kill. Oh man. Down goes Beautiful. the death dread, leaving just a crater, not even a corpse have of the vehicle. Another warp sp oh, he loves to go for these double warp spider plays. And I, I think double warp spiders is particularly strong against orcs, probably. I mean it's good period. It's just very it's so much range damage. Wow, so yeah. now, I, I don't been know. It's impossible to call. This yeah, it's, it's, it's tough right now. Uh, Tex still sitting, once he gets a little bit more power, he'll be able to bring another tier 3 something onto the field if he so chooses. But he's got to, at this point, he's got to be really careful with his, uh, with his bleed, I think. Because as soon as I think it's in favor of one player, things shift just a little bit and go back in favor of the other player. I mean, these are the kind of matches I wanted to see. It's 235 to 199, so it's still anyone's game. Uh, bringing the Pain Boy on the field, he's probably doing that specifically so he can get his Cyborg implants and provide 
some healing support as well to his Nop squad. Oh dear. Those those Slugger boys were treating through all that. Luckily, the Wraith Lord wasn't really paying yeah, attention. Yeah, not enough of a follow-up from the Wraith Lord. I think if he had paid attention earlier with that, he could have gotten two swings with the sword and probably taken out two of the models. Those those knobs really have not paid off much so far. It's a lot of investment to what really has just kind of been a damage sponge. <laughs> yeah, and I mean they're they're not actually like losing that much health, but they're they're having trouble actually doing things and being relevant. Yeah, I think while he had that Death Dread out, maybe having a tank to support that may have been a better call. But now he's going, I mean, he's obviously going hard in on the knobs now, also choosing to get the Pain Boy. He does have the Cyborg implants, so uh, I would imagine he's going for the speed upgrade for those knobs, but we'll see what he decides to go for. Now, I don't know if you also realize this, but right now Holy Hammer does not have a repair unit. And he hasn't had a repair unit for probably like at least the last three minutes, if not more than that. Uh, and he's oh got my gosh! That was brutal. Oh <laughs> All right, now I think it's going in favor of Holy Hammer. Yeah, I mean that was just that. If if there was ever an assassination attempt on a on a hero, that oh was God. it. That was painful. The kinetic shot with the Rangers combined with Warp Spiders and the Banshees to make short work of the Commando. Now he didn't even have a chance to get up and retreat. I mean, we really are seeing. Like a lot of these abilities be used to their potential. I also love the little sounds the Wraith Lord makes as it walks. <laughs> if you get really close to it. Oh yeah, all this little mechanical, yeah. Just very faint. Yeah, it is like faint, but you can like hear it. Man, Tex is really going to need to do something with Paint these knobs shortly. Ah, uh, he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll, he'll live. I, I mean, he retreated him pretty early. So he's Ooh, got... The knobs are now surrounded. Yeah, they've got to pick one side to go for. Yeah, I think, yeah, they need to, like, pick something and either do it or or honestly just retreat. Either either one. Can't just stay there. And meaner and greener or... Yeah, Yeah, he's just going to need to get out of there. Like, by the, time, by the time that wears off, he needs to run. And I mean, of he could engage Lord, those rangers, though. The Wraith Lord does now have melee resist, so... Yeah, I mean, walkers, now that they have that upgrade, a lot more effective at dealing with this sort of thing. Holy Hammer now finally heading into Tier 3 himself, and that that could be really brutal for Tex. He has the... Yeah. He has, has the resources to get some stuff out on the field. He could, If he gets a Fire Prism right now, that's going to be it. As tough as things looked, I mean, Tex still showing some signs of life. He's actually got the double cap. Uh, he's got five squads, five units, in, and his commander. And he actually almost has the resources to maybe get something else. Booby Traps forcing off the Banshees that were in hot pursuit of the commandos. Those Booby Traps have been doing some pretty reasonable work. Didn't quite do enough damage to secure a kill with those Slugga boys on the far end, but... Seeing the Warp Spider constantly doing what he does best in harassing other range squads. Oh, and finally, there we go. Got the Rocket Launcher on the Commando. Let me see. Rocket Launcher on the Commando. All right, so that should threaten the Wraith Lord a lot more. That's actually pretty big, considering Holy Hammer does not have a repair unit. Did Holy Hammer lose a squad at some point? I feel like... What are we missing? Uh, let's see. I feel like not, like, less than a minute ago, he had six units. Six units in his unit bar. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Did he still have the setup it had team? It to be a, yeah, the setup team. So, he lost the setup team sometime in the past maybe two minutes. Uh, with with the Wraith out. Lord, though, now that Holy Hammer is tier three, it's not going to be as difficult. Although, bringing out the Fire Prism, it will matter that he doesn't oh, have man, the repair The, the unit. Fire Prism is big. The Fire Prism is big. Because that can that really has the potential to invalidate the knobs. But yeah, the, the, the Fire Prism especially. Uh, the Once he gets the Wraith Bone upgrade on that Wraith Lord, he'll be able to repair that on its own. Do a little self-repair action. Yeah, I actually think that's a really great upgrade. It's just that you've now got your Walker in Tier 3 when it is kind of... Somewhat scaled out. I feel like walkers don't scale completely that well into tier three. Right. Well, even still having that bright lance on it, like, makes it viable. Yeah, yeah. He can oh, even like man, be less that was aggressive a good with it. Attack. Just keep the bright lance. He's got plenty of anti-vehicle. 
this could be the final engagement, but Tex, I mean, he's still holding on to the VP, still playing the VP war, and he's got a lead in VPs, 142 to 91. He's not winning the engagement, but he's got a two to nothing cap, possibly gonna threaten a triple. Yeah, I mean, a bunch of warp spiders have anything to say about it. Yeah, along with that fire prism, that fire prism can knock him off of there easily. But the warp spiders scare him off Here. before it even happens. Yeah, I and mean, they do so much damage so quickly. I don't know if you saw it, but there was a flank there that Tex pulled off with his slugger boys. Nearly took out the rangers. The rangers were very fortunate I did to escape. Actually see the flank when they were. I saw the the slugger boys. I was actually worried for the slugger boys because they were losing quite a few of their models, but uh. Looks like it worked out, and he was able to get those Slugger Boys back home. So he's bought himself a little time. Yeah, he's bringing a tank onto the field, which he, he definitely needs. Uh, I mean, but it's, it's... It's right now the since... Answer to the Fire Prism, but the Warp Spiders. Yeah, I mean, the Warp Spiders with the Haywires are definitely going to yeah. be a, a huge problem. But so far, like, we've seen Tex playing around the Warp Spiders very well. Like, the Commandos, if he, if he gets a good knockback on these guys, should be able to force them off pretty quickly. Let's see. He's going for the burn a bomb. Into, nope. Oh, just go straight into that. I was. I thought he was going to do burn a bomb right into that. Uh, the burn a bomb. If Hammer was paying attention, he would have. Yeah, just been I able mean, to it's a slow throw, of. and if Holy Hammer is like, if his micro as good as it's like said to be, like he could actually react out of that. Yeah. So suddenly the triple caps turned right back around. The only problem is, is that this time there's a fire prism watching the field, yeah. and it's very difficult I, to get any sort he's of got so this. little time to make something happen i mean he's got he's got, got squads on the far side taking the points so he's just going to not engage that fire oh. prism for as long as he can wow what are these things doing here so it it almost even looks like he might not even necessarily be trying to win like head on like winning militarily but trying to play the vp war I mean, even right now would be a perfect time to start pushing in on the on the other side like, while he's even, got... Or even right now, send the Commando Knob to cap the, capture the middle, which I think is what he's going to do. While all of Holy Hammer's stuff is distracted, taking on the knobs. I actually think this is probably a bit of a blunder by Holy Hammer to commit his entire army just to taking out the knobs. Because here comes Tex now with the flank, removes the Warp Spiders from the field. There's not actually a whole lot of anti-vehicle to oh, take wow, out. Oh, wow, this uh, may like, have been the perfect Where's play. The tank? The tank now, like, needs to come in now, and this will actually secure the victory for Tex. Tex could win this. It's so close. There is a Warp Spider XR decapping Tex's natural VP, but I don't know if it'll be enough. No, I don't think so. It's only 20 points left. The Fire Prism is going back. Ooh, Tex throws the early GG. Tex calling the GG? Ooh. Holy Hammer. Holy, Holy Hammer, Hammer calls it. it. Yep, he takes it. And you know, I think what was really, really well done there? Wow. Tex did not move in the tank until very late in that engagement when it wouldn't be threatened by the no, warp spider. No, that's, that's so critical is that you yeah. can't Oops. move a tank in on its own until you have the right support and the right threats off the field. But once they can't deal with that tank, that tank's such a huge thing. to Like, it's just, you can't deal with that. That was an incredible...